The commands you've learned so far will allow you to create flexible scripts that can be adapted to many different scenarios. There is one more command you will learn to round out your toolkit of Unix commands, the sed command. Sed is an abbreviation for stream editor, in that the input to sed is a stream of text, the same concept as the input and output streams that were discussed in a previous video. Sed will take a stream of input text and replace one string with another, which is useful for altering scripts during each iteration of a for loop. To see how sed works, use Text Wrangler to create a text file called hello.sh that contains the following code. This is simply a text file that runs one line of code. If instead you wanted to swap the name Andy with Bill, you could do a search and replace within Text Wrangler, or you could type the following in the terminal. Note that the sed command is divided into three sections. 1. Declaring the sed command. 2. A block of code in close in quotes, indicating which pattern to swap with another pattern. And 3. The file to be read into sed, in this case, hello.sh. Let's focus on the pattern section. I prefer to enclose this section in double quotes, so that if I include a variable in the pattern, it will be expanded before the sed command is run. The first part of this section is an S, which means to swap the following pair of strings. The first of the pair is what is being searched for in the text file, and the second of the pair is what it will be replaced with. The G stands for global, which means to replace every instance of the first word with the second word. The vertical pipes are separators for each field in the sed command, although you can use any character. If you run this command, you should see the following output. If instead you wanted to redirect this output into a new text file, you would use this code. As always, you can call the output file whatever you like. If you want to edit the file and overwrite it instead of redirecting the output into a new file, you can use the dash i option. Dash i option stands for in place and signifies that the text file should be overwritten after the words have been swapped. The empty quotes are used to get the dash i option to work with Macintosh operating systems. If they aren't included, said throws an error. As with other commands, sed can be combined with for loops and conditional statements to write more sophisticated code. For example, let's say that we want to create several copies of a template file and only change one word of it over a list of names. In Text Wrangler, let's start by creating a file called names.sh, which contains the following code. Then, save it out. Here, change name is a placeholder. I've typed it in all capital letters to make it stand out, which is especially useful in larger text files. Now we can use a for loop to create several copies of this file, replacing change name with whichever name is currently in the loop. This will create three shell scripts, each one a variation on printing a name. Sed is a simple but powerful command that completes the core of our text manipulation commands. In the next video, you will see how all of these commands and concepts that you learned, for loops, conditional statements, awk, sed, can be combined to analyze an fMRI dataset.